So today uh, I was cutting uh, this pine log and um, I'm getting a lot of uh, belt slippage. And I thought the belt was just uh, basically worn out, but uh, it just seems that the uh, pulley uh, needs to be adjusted. And how, how we do that on this mill is uh, we open up this cover. It's a little bit windy today, so excuse the wind noise. So this, this sawmill basically runs on uh, traction on the blade uh, on a wheel that is being turned by the engine. So it's basically a direct drive system. So we've got uh, quite a quite a loose belt, and I can hear it, and it's shiny. So I know it's spinning because it's too loose. So to adjust this uh, uh, mill is is pretty pretty easy. I know I've seen other mills where they have like an idler that uh, puts pressure on the belt. That that may be a good system because you should never have to adjust it. But I know I've seen some YouTubers that still have problems with that. So basically, on this mill here, which is the uh, Forest West. Uh, a 16 inch 15 horsepower mill um, basically a Chinese import you get uh, just like these adjusting screws that bolt the motor down to the plate and then what you have is I've already loosened these if I can find my wrench which I know I had it in my hand just a minute ago uh, yes we have them here there's 17 mil, and you basically loosen these off. I've got them loose. And then on this side, oh, let me try not to fall over myself. This one here is not quite loose enough yet. That one's loose. That one's loose. So we loosen those four off, and then that allows us to crank these in, which is now pushing the, the whole motor assembly that way. You want to do it equal turns. I'm going to take an alignment of it after I'm done, but to be safe that you're not uh, doing it wrong, just basically turn them the same. I want to get the camera in the right spot here. Without my thumb in the way. That seems to be a bit of crooked on it. I can tell I'm going. This one is uh, more than that one. So let's bring that back a bit. I see it's twisting the motor because I'm applying pressure so we got to bring this back yeah the belt is pulling on the motor as I'm adjusting it so it's sending this one that way so maybe lock down this and only pivot it with the one so let's go back and check and see where we've got it if we've got it where it would be Oh yeah, that's way, way tighter. That's almost like a car uh, car fan belt tightness now. So basically what I need to do is back this off so that this is hitting that and then so I get proper alignment on both. Let me just switch hands here. So yeah. I guess I can put a pry bar in there and bend it back or just do what I said earlier and loosen this one back off. To get this one back in line. Let's take this. All right, that one's back in line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this one down so it'll pivot basically this way. All right, let me uh, just set you down. All right, so what I've done is I've uh, tightened. Let me see if I can get that in focus. 
tighten this one down. This one's loose, so I'm going to crank this one down. I've got the, uh, oh, 18, that's a 16. I think it's a 16. Yep. So I'm going to line this up with the same amount of, uh, threads exposed right here and right here I hope this video turns out anyways So we're getting it to where we're uh, going to be uh, have to go around the front and check. Like so. We'll see what we got around the front. Oh yeah, that's good and tight. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll tighten those other ones. Uh, the base plate, tighten them, and we're ready to go. So that's how you uh, adjust the uh, tension on the belt, dry belt for the uh, Forest West sawmill. All right, hope this uh, didn't turn out too, too blurry. Thanks for watching. So after uh, tightening the dry belt, I've got no more slipping. But uh, I, I did cut uh, quite a bit of red oak and I kind of abused the blade quite a bit. Um, the blade I run is for uh, softwood. Hang on, let me just shut this off. There. All right, the blade I run is meant for softwood. I guess the pitch of the blade and the number of teeth and the angle of the pitch uh, tells you what kind of wood you should cut with it so I had a new blade installed prior to doing uh, quite a large oak log like that one there and uh, the last few cuts of the oak was pretty slow um, I've got another video on that one I haven't uploaded yet but I'll get to that um, but starting on this white pine which is relatively soft yes this is a big piece of wood um, the amount of wave that was happening was crazy. Like the blade was lifting, was pitching straight up and climbing up the log uh, and and really not cutting well at all. Let me just flip this over. So I don't know if you can see down there the waves on the right-hand side of this piece of wood that I was cutting. Usually uh, you get waves when you hit knots because it's a harder spot in the log and and the waves will make it climb and lower but I was just getting huge waves and so I thought well, that's weird so I put a brand new blade on it and I just cut this piece I'm holding so you can tell the difference between the uh, left side of this cut and the right with the, the new blade is on the left and the used, used blade the beat up blade obviously see the, the weird thing is it felt sharp to my finger uh, put my fingernail test, but obviously it is not. But that new blade, that's dead straight. So there you go. So I know a lot of guys complain about waviness of their cuts. And uh, I know it has a lot to do with the type of tree and the, and the knots in the tree like this one has there. But that is huge difference just with a brand new blade. But uh, anyways, yeah, just add this onto the uh, back end of this video then.